Today on Early Morning Show, we're going to be talking about anger management and how to overcome being triggered enough to choke someone out. And in the man's bartender, we're going to be serving up Dew Weisers. Dew Weisers are a combination of Budweiser beer and Mountain Dew ratio. Stick around for the advice and have a beer with me. Can't wait to do it. Let's start the show. Let's cue the rooster and get this show started. It's five o'clock on a planet somewhere, and we're about to get our drink on. Welcome to the Man's Bartender. Welcome to the Man's Bartender. Today we're going to be mixing up Dew Wisers. Dew Weisers make a great combination drink when you want to spice up an average beer. You get all the benefits of a well-chewed beer along with the taste and caffeine of the soda. What could be better? Okay. First, you want to start with the well-chewed beer, and that has been refrigerated for at least three hours. The same goes for the soda. For this exercise, we're using a broad glass to capture the essence of both. Now, this mixture is a three to one ratio. That being said, you want to add three parts of the alcohol to just one part of the soda. You want to ensure that the glass is dust free and rinsed with cold water just prior to the pour, just like I did with this one here. Now do not chill the glass as this will affect the taste of the beer and make it go flat much quicker. Okay, so what we're going to do also, you want a nice head on the beer and that's a foam at least one to two inches of foam, okay? Uh, and you know what type of head I'm talking about, let's not get nasty. So. Now, the next thing is what you want to do is we want to turn the glass at a 45 degree angle for the pour. So if the glass is at a 45 degree angle, you want to pour about there, about midway, uh, almost towards the top of the glass, while, there, while it's in action, right? And then when it gets about three-fourths to the top, then we'll turn that glass up and continue to pour. You get the foam head that you guys look for. Well, we're going to leave enough distance in this glass so we can add the Mountain Dew. The Mountain Dew, since they both are carbonated drinks, shouldn't take away from the head on the glass. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so we open up the Budweiser. Take that tap on top. You turn it in straight. It's gonna chug, blah, 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 blah. And everybody hates that, right? So you take it and turn that tap sideways. Remember, 45 degree angle for the glass, sideways for the pour. Okay, you see where you pour it at? Foam, I turn it up now. All right, now you see the head on that one. Now I want to add <coughs> one part of the Mountain Dew. Now that one you could just pour it directly in. So when you're pouring a beer where you want to get a nice head on it, at this point, if I pour the rest of the beer in there, you want to pour it directly into the center. That way it raises up the head even higher. So we'll do the same with the Mountain Dew. Okay, just one fourth. There you have it. Do wiser. Look at that. Look at the head on that. Amazing, right? Now, you could either add a little bit more do or a little more wise. It's up to you. But if you want the head better on that beer, it's always a pour in the center. Now, stay around for the next segment. And I'm going to try this. Um, I've had it before, but I don't want to go pour it to waste. So I just pour it down my throat. Here's you guys, do watch it. Mm. 
good way to start the morning than a beer mustache. Be right back. Don't go nowhere. See you in a minute. I hope to see you back next time on The Man's Bartender. Join me each week and we're going to be making some great drinks, some crazy drinks, and stuff that you can prepare for your friends at a party where it looks like you've been a bartender for a long time. Thank you for watching me Coming Saturday, October the 24th on the men's channel, Stella Nichols poisons her husband. And now, we bring you Killer Wives, Episode 2, The Pharmacy. The following episode contains actual facts where Stella Nichols poisoned her husband, Bruce Nichols. View discretion is advised. Mr. Nichols is unresponsive dying in the bed he once shared with his wife because of lethal concoction. Dying now, Mr. Nichols is rushed to Harborview Medical Center where a futile attempt at treating him failed. On this episode of Killer Wives, we talk about how trusting the person you lay next to each night can get you killed. This is the story of Stella Nichol. It is a well-known fact that male killers go after people they don't know, while female killers take the lives of those closest to them. Then who took the life of Bruce Nichol on the afternoon of July the 5th, 1986, the law, to include a conviction for fraud in 1968? Another charge the following year of beating her first daughter with a curtain rod and a conviction for forgery in 1971. Nichols served six months in jail for the fraud charge and was ordered into counseling at the abuse charge. Nichol met Bruce Nichol in 1974. Bruce was a heavy equipment operator with a drinking habit, which suited her lifestyle just fine. And the two were married in 1976. In the course of their 10 year marriage, he entered rehab and gave up drinking cold turkey, which she resented him for. Check YouTube listings for the early morning show. Welcome. On today's commentary corner, we're speaking out about anger management and how you can overcome being triggered. Now, I have found for myself, whether through counseling others in the past or reading myself of anger, that it's best to teach people how to handle stress in the moment. Dealing in a moment when you feel yourself at the boiling point is more preferable than avoidance or choking someone the hell out. Now I feel that all of us need this type of counsel because if you live long enough, you will come to understand that there is no stress-free location to this planet at all. Our triggers to stress out in bad situations are typically hardwired into our psyche by the age of six years. Due to this hard wiring, we become capable of noticing great pain and suffering in the world. We become able to witness great pleasure and healing in the world. And then we end up leaning towards the one we want to take part in, pain or suffering, pleasure or healing. Depending on what you pick from this video today will change the choice you have tomorrow. Do arguments with family members, coworkers and strangers find us or do we find them? Most of us blindly manifest the events people and outcomes we dislike about our childhood 
into our daily existence, and this includes how we deal with negative people, and you know they're dime a dozen. This perception of life predicts how we deal with our finances during this COVID recession. We do things we uh, because we are not consciously aware that we are sleepwalking through life with our eyes wide open. You see, if you're currently a participant of a community, a job, or relationship where you feel unhappy, it is because you know that you can do better, but you choose not to. Even when we sleep at night, we get a dose of what our lives could be like in the direction of wealth, or what you run from in life manifested through nightmares of danger, or worse, poverty. To move forward, you must remove whatever stumbling block to happiness based upon past holdover issues. In other words, you need to slay your own internal dragons, because everybody has them. No matter what one's income or status in the world, I typically find people's cause to anger associated with infancy and preteen years and all my years of counseling. In fact, I have never met an adult in my life with an adulthood issue. Most people are adults with childhood issues. And it is through these issues that people motivated us to hate, anger, and rage. Because of this, you will never know peace until you release the largest burning issue you refuse to address in your life. Without releasing that age-old injury, you could be a millionaire on a beach restaurant, sipping a Mai Tai, having a good time, brother, and be excited to anger if your waiter came out resembling someone that hurt you as a child. You see, our anger never exists in the people we disagree with. It exists only in the people who disagree with our past when we were children. Remember, someone from your past who looks like the waiter made you mad. We mask the roots of our anger with people based upon our current wealth or position of power within a given structure. A power structure that most likely mirrors the past we are trying to free ourselves from or run away from. In short, the past that you thought you left behind is keeping you behind. There's an age old saying that goes, an entire sea of water can't sink a ship unless it gets inside of that ship. Similarly, the negativity of the world can't put you down unless you allow it to get inside of you. And a lot of us do. I'm reminded of an example that uh, is in a riddle that goes, if a man gives another man a gift, so I gave it this cup, and the second man refuses to accept it, then who does it belong to? Now, if you say it belongs back to me, then you are right. Then why do you accept anger when people present it to you on a daily basis? Most people find it easier to accept something negative about themselves while refusing to take a positive comment, like, you look good today. To that, most people say, who, me? I don't look good, I'm ugly. I find it best when someone has given me something I don't want, like a negative comment, to politely decline it. That's all right, you keep it. To give that back, if you will. No, I'm good. Let them have it. That funky old dirty gift of anger. It came poorly wrapped in the body of a person anyway, right? Now, the second thing you want to do is stop shrinking from stress. I believe that if you can stand up to someone enough to choke them out, you can at least face that same person to turn them off. Understand that this person in the form of a different of different people was sent in your life until you face your past. Every adult bully, conniver, or underhanded person in some way, shape, or form is the embodiment of what we're ducking and dodging in life. Life sends all of us the same person we despise as a child until we stand up to that childhood. The next step is that you need renewal. For most people have grown old in their own dreams and passions while still residing in a young body. They're old before their time. For any of us to be revived, something within us must first cease to exist. This is a universal constant to life, be it physically, mentally, or emotionally. Here are some examples in order to produce a baby sperm, right? To produce a baby from sperm and egg, you must, the egg they must die to their original design. In order for that baby to become a toddler, the baby must die to its original dependent design. And in order for that toddler to run as free as an infant, he must die to the fumblings of a baby. And this growth process follows the same throughout our entire life until we hit what we determine to be an insurmountable brick wall. This wall marks the last day of our growth and ushers in our ultimate decline. Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, once said, when you're green, you're growing. And when you stop, you start to rot. You start to rot, he, he meant that just with plants, just like with plants, when you have grown as high as you think you can, you have nothing after that but rot to look forward to. So keep growing. Now, next, 
Don't take every slight as something personal. Know that, that there are many scorpions on the beautiful beach of life. And that I mean that most pe painful people go around stinging other people. They just love to do it. Next, in order to move on, you must understand why it's so hard to let go of a painful past. It is difficult to forget something we greatly detest. Why? As hard as it is something we greatly love. Because the things we hate were once those things we loved. Next step. Find out if you are operating within your actual worth or are you accepting people who are counterproductive to that worth? Must you increase what you are worth to others? Should you have them increase their worth to you? Next, seek to entice a better class relationship to that life. This is known as increasing your self-worth. Most people who do not do this have considered themselves as having less value than the people they surround themselves with. For no one can rise above what they think about themselves or the people around them. In doing this, you attract better people to your sphere. Now, how do we attract less argumentative, dynamic people and opportunity to our life and our sphere? Most dynamic people that you're trying to attract in businesses are not interested in investing in people alone, but dynamic movements that come from such people or you. Are you a dynamic person? In other words, the people that we attract engage and keep in our lives are in a direct reflection of what we internally feel we are worth. If you have a bitter people around you, own up to your bitterness. If you have positive people around you, then own up to that uh, positivity. Now, next, understand that the most powerful love within you or another person will occupy and dominate any room. If an argument has broken out in a particular area or room, it means that love is weaker in that space. In fact, a more powerful love will kill a weaker love. You don't believe me? The next time, instead of leading uh, with low energies, bring love to that space and watch anger die. Next step, check your health. If you are in a situation, relationship, or job that you do not particularly love, your health will show that for sure. Your health will show what your consciousness feels about that relationship. Positive health is the body's signal of contentment, as negative health is its warnings of discontentment. Did you know that the top five diseases in America are preventable? And they come from us. Diabetes, cancer, obesity, AIDS, and hypertension. When we engage in no win confrontation with people that we dislike, our cortisol levels rise and this becomes the root of all diseases, hypertension, hair loss, weight gain, heart disease, schizophrenia, tunnel vision, and slow healing wounds once you receive a cut. Now, next up, uh, learn to reduce the cortisol level. Maybe your stress levels are telling you that it is time to move on in life. It is a far more effortless the path to riches than it is the contest to stay poor with yourself. Look at what energies you take to work or an unrewarding career as compared to how effortless it is to work for yourself as an entrepreneur. But watch how many people gladly show up for a job they hate and call in sick for themselves as entrepreneurs. You have to move on in your head and your heart long before you do your body. The subconscious is designed to give us only what we work on diligently, and that's why you have to do that, and less of what we want sparingly, okay? Now, next step. You can tell if you have been burned out as a parent, if you have a child that's sick or failing in school, because children are designed to be the thermometers of any relationship. If your relationship is too cold, with the child's mother, a child will heat it up by acting out in school, acting out in life. Conversely, if your relationship is too heated towards one another, the child will get sick. Either way, the child changes from hot to cold in order to take the attention off of you hating each other and put it back upon them. Once you turn towards the child to heal, they suddenly get well and they move on. Next up, change the tempo of the beat in your head. You don't have to be in an environment to be within that environment. A ficus tree can easily exist in a negative work environment, just as well as it could in a positive one. Learn to be that ficus when everything is insane all around you. Understand that when you hate someone, it is typically because they reflect something within you that you dislike about yourself. If you hate someone for being a liar, then there is some form of liar within you that you haven't gotten rid of yet. Finally, you have to be able to forgive and forget the people who wronged you in the past to move forward. I can think of no better example to give you than the Fort Knox experiment. I formulated this and taught this visualization theory for years in, to audiences on the radio. The Fort Knox experiment on forgiveness. 
Now, my first duty station in the military was at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Now, at Fort Knox, there's two parts of that post. Uh, one is the gold reserve. So the bulk, the bulk of majority of gold in the United States exists at Fort Knox in protection of the military and the federal government. The remaining part of the base is for training of soldiers and basic training and armor or tanks. So that was my first duty station. And so I cultivated a training method for people when I used to give counseling that they could use for forgiveness. And so I call it the Fort Knox experiment. So I want you to imagine that you and five other people like a game show are at Fort Knox, Kentucky. And that's where those big bricks of gold exist. Okay? And they weigh a certain amount. They're pretty heavy. One brick is pretty heavy. And they, uh, one brick costs about a half million dollars. Right? So, what you must do at the, at the game show, they give you two bags. These are metal mesh bags. So one big bag on the side, because the gold is heavy, if you drop it in a bag, it will destroy a normal bag. And you get a bag on this side. So to start the game show, they're gonna give you one of those half a million dollar bricks of gold, which is very heavy, okay? It takes a lot of strength to move one. And you can put that in the bag. You can put one brick per person that you have forgiven in life. One brick per person, right? So they ask you to start it again. Now they have the list. They know the people that you have forgiven in life. They tell you to start. Now you stand there and everybody looks at you. Go, 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 put the bricks in the bag. You can't because since you was a child, you have never been able to forgive anybody. Okay, you could check from your age now, back up to childhood. If somebody slighted you, you have never fully forgiven them. So you're not able to put not one brick in that bag. At least you would have had a half million dollars and walked away just with one. So you, that's disqualification for you. But you can participate in the other bag. The other bag gives you time. They're going to give you at least 20 minutes to gather as many bricks as you can for people who have slighted you and that you have drawn hatred for and you have not forgiven, right? So in this contest, even when the 20 minutes is up, you have run out of time because you have a mountain of bricks for the people that you have never forgiven in your entire life. It's a mountain of big bricks. The gold bricks would not even fit in that bag. If they would, they would destroy the bag. And a part of the contest is that you can only take the bag away by your own power, not by a forklift, not by help, not by vehicle. So you can't take the one bag with the one brick because you never forgave anybody. So you can't get a half million dollars. And on this side, you're missing out on billions of dollars because you have a mountain of bricks of people that you hated and have never forgiven. And you can't even lift that. That's a dead weight in your life. So a lot of that is holding back. When you go to work and you get an argument with somebody, you get home with your better half or your children you get an argument with somebody, those are childhood-based arguments. And they keep people hating you in life and you keep hating people in life, and until you knock that stuff off, you know, be to go ahead. We're we'll back in just a minute. You guys don't go anywhere. It's a great show coming up. Today on The Man's Kitchen. We're having sirloin steak with caramelized onions and garlic. You won't want to miss it. Stick around. Welcome back to the man's kitchen. We're going to be doing a uh, top sirloin steak. This one's a 100% grass fed uh, finished beef. And that's going to be cooked uh, to medium rare. And we're going to be adding to that some caramelized onions. The caramelized onions just means that you're browning the onions. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to go ahead and brown the onions first. We're going to add four tablespoons of butter to that. Okay. Uh, then we're going to add one medium onion. So I pre-chopped the medium onion here. Go ahead and put that in the ground. At the bottom of the skillet, you might have noticed I always put some, uh, a little bit of oil, vegetable oil in. 
Not enough to burn, but to get that butter started. Okay, we'll just go ahead and layer those in the bottom. In the bottom. Alright. And to that we're gonna add two cloves of garlic. So you might see here that I already have some garlic chopped up. Whole garlic like that, you just take it, and you can mash it. Here, it's not hard, it's not hard at all. And that's how it turns out. Let's get some woodsy piece there, we don't need that. Let me go ahead and chop that up. about a medium to medium high heat and we need to go ahead and let those brown. So we're gonna let those brown I guess about 13 minutes. So then we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Salt to taste. A little pepper. Pepper and steak always goes good together. The rest of the salt you can use when you actually eat it, but the pepper you can add that. Right. So let that brown a little bit. You enjoy the music or the music while it's playing. Somebody asked me the other day, you know, while your channels change between the music and all that kind of stuff. And those changes were planned day one when I made this channel. I didn't make this channel merely to be a YouTube page. I always had in mind that it would be a television station for men. See that onions are starting to uh, cook there? Let me turn it up a little bit. Let me start a little bit higher. So the parsley is going to be the garnishing when it's done. So we don't need that parsley uh, anymore at this point. But after those onions are done, we're going to go ahead and Separate those from the where we're gonna put the steak in the same pan. But right now the steak is nice and soft because it's a uh, tenderloin. But what you can do in these type packages that I buy, you don't have to go to the butcher, you can actually get these delivered to your house. In the studio here, you can tenderize it actually in the plastic. When you tenderize anything, when you use a mallet or your hand, or whatever it may be, you're breaking down the muscle. So that's muscle that keeps it rough. So just like when you get a massage at the bed at the gym all day long, that's tenderizing. So that's a little bit softer right now. Okay. So, like I said, too bad you don't have smell vision because those onions smell good. That garlic does too. Sweet smell for the garlic. Now, after that's finished, brown the onions, we're going to put some balsamic vinegar on those and those flavors will come real well when it's time to eat, when the steak is finally finished. So, we're going to go ahead and give it 13 more minutes. Well, about 10. To the magic of television. We'll come back and we're going to add some brown sugar to that. And that's going to go ahead and help it uh, brown a little more. So we'll be right back with you guys. Don't go nowhere. It's almost dinner time in the man's kitchen. Thanks guys. And just like that, we're back to the magic of television. You can see those onions are starting to caramelize. Okay? You don't want to have it up too high. That's like a medium low right now because the uh, onions will caramelize, but the garlic will burn. When garlic burns, it sets out a sweet flavor, but uh, it makes crunchy garlic. 
we're going to do right now is take about a tablespoon of brown sugar, mix that in there. It doesn't help with the caramelization. Anytime you add sugar to any fried product, it caramelizes it. Or you can say toast it. Mix that all up. That depends on how dark you like your onions. They don't have to be dark as night. We'll leave that for one more minute. Just about per side. Now, the other question that somebody asked me, they said, uh, while well, I'm cooking here, they said, why is it that you insist that uh, women do some things, but you don't say men do them the same thing? I'm not worried about that. One reason I dislike Oprah Winfrey, she spent almost 30 years on the air criticizing men, but she did it in a, such a poetic way, you would never know. And so this channel is going to do the reverse. We're going to talk about males in a positive way. So anybody who says, why don't you talk about women too in a positive way? I'm not talking about a negative way, I'm just telling the truth. There's other channels for that. If you don't want to watch this one, you can go to those channels. I won't stop you, I still love you. But uh, yeah, Oak Winfrey has been with Stedman longer than most people have been married, well over 35, 40 years. So the retention age men, that's actually what I mean. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna put some balsamic vinegar on top of those onions, because we're gonna separate them. And if you went to any place, I guess like Olive Garden or any of those places like that, they have balsamic vinegar to put on your salad, your veggies, and in this case, the onions. Now one thing about it, all of that goodness that came off those onions and that garlic, that's going to be used to do that uh, steak with. So we'll do that the same thing. We try to scrape the rest of that garlic out of there so it does not burn. This garlic will burn. So there's the onions at the bottom of that pan there. See? I'm going to put a splash of that balsamic vinegar right on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See that? We'll just leave it to the side. Don't cover it up. It'll get wet. I'm going to turn that down so that it doesn't burn that oil. I'm going to come over here to the steak, free it from its imprisoned bag. Get a little bit more closer to that cut. Push that down. There we go. Get that open. All right. We need to squeeze that right out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Start a trusty fan. And what we want to do is going to make that medium rare. Medium rare. Medium rare, medium smoke. So we can put that down on like medium low to medium low. And like I said, that's just as tender as butter. So it won't take long, maybe about four minutes per side to be medium rare, in this case. In the restaurant industry, you can find medium rare, rare, or well done at a certain temperature. But if you're a cook, like I had two years ago in a restaurant, we just do it with our knuckles. And we can tell by the softness and how the steak bounces back and the juices that's released from the steak when it's cooked tonight. You don't want to burn yourself because you've been cooking for so long, you can't feel it. I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over because I want it to go ahead and brown on both sides. I want one side to be uh, undone while the other side is covered. Let's see that? All right. Now, because I'm not going to eat this right now, I'm going to store it for later. So you can store steak for later if you make it medium rare. So tonight I'm going to have this for dinner. 
So I'm going to make it a medium rare. I'm going to put it inside the foil with the onions on top of it so it can absorb that flavor. And when you put it in the foil like that and let it rest, it's going to absorb any of the juices it might have lost, and it's going to stay tender. So tonight when I come back, I'm going to put that steak in um, a warm oven to medium hot oven inside and warm it back up to temperature. I'm not going to put it back to a pan, otherwise you'll make it leather or good beef jerky. All right, so we're going to make sure that I don't do it all the way. You guys got your timers at the house? Your timing? And that balsamic vinegar, like I said, you can buy it in any form. This vinaigrette at your market. And that does wonders for salads, like I say, or something like those onions. As far as the flavor, It's nothing better than adding a flavor to something that did not have it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Like I say, we're going to be using real garlic. And I broke up two cloves of garlic from that main clove. And then it's pretty easy once you take the skin off. And you can pinch it out from there. See, just one comes free. like that. And then you can go ahead and take your knife and skin that coating. There's a slight coating on the outside. You want the garlic to be like a medium salt. You don't want it too mushy or too dry when you make it. And the parsley that's going to garnish it comes from your store fresh. Mm, always fresh. You don't want that dry stuff in a can. Anything that you get that's dry in the shaker in this uh, any country is the lowest grade. Lowest grade. So let me flip that away from us. And you see how it's brown? You see how brown it is? So anything that you would get in those containers is lowest grade. If you buy parsley in a shaker, that is the waste parsley of the leaves. Anything could be in there. But in this country, I don't care if you get pepper or you even if you buy cigarettes, that tobacco is like with the shavings of real tobacco. So anything that a corporation would sell to you, I guarantee a corporate head will not eat that at their house or their mansion at the top. So always get the freshest thing, just like they would. It tastes better. Okay. So that is about a medium rare. Almost, because by the way it bounced. Now if I wanted to, I could brown the sides. But see, I don't need that. Because I want it to be just nice, just like that. You can also put a knife or sharp object in the middle and see if, the, if there's still blood that comes out. See, now that's a nice medium ring. You see how the blood cooled on the surface when I did that? See that? That's a nice medium ring. Now, so we don't make a beef jerky, we'll stop right there. Flip it over. Come on, you can do it. You're going to do it. There we go. Okay. So we'll flip it over. Put that to the back. Go ahead and put that on the aluminum foil. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those onions, as many as I need. I mean, I need all of them. But hey, go ahead and layer them on top of that. And you can eat anything with this. You can do the baked potato, you can do the steamed rice, you can do the french fries, whatever you like. It's up to you, not to me. Go ahead and garnish that with a little bit of parsley, fresh parsley. Remember, not the stuff in the container. If the corporation or the CEO won't eat the product that he sells you, don't eat it. Okay, so there you are. You have your caramelized onions on top of your top sirloin grass-fed beef steak. This is Charles for The Man's Kitchen. Stick around for the next segment. Glad you guys came to join me. I wish you could join me for dinner. We'll see you again next time. That is going to be some kind of good. Yeah.
and get that ready at the top like that. Later on, I'll put it in the oven. I'll form it that way so a little chimney will form. Got the little hole there. Because when I do put it in the oven later on, I don't want to steam it. I just want to reheat it. See you guys soon. Don't go anywhere. This week on the Men's Medical Moment, we're talking about vitamins. What do you need for your health? How do you need to take care of yourself? Stick around. Today on the Men's Medical Moment, we're talking about vitamins and how they affect your daily health, because they need that. We need it as men for health. By now, I'm sure that everyone knows that vitamins and minerals are considered essential nutrients that help us to keep our bones strong. Without that, we'd be pretty weak, right? They repair cell damage and help to convert what we eat into energy we need to get through the day, and most importantly, the COVID environment that we need now to boost our immune system. But there is some discussion about what we need as men from the community of vitamins, as opposed to what women need for vitamins. Let's journey through some in alphabetical fashion. Now, as a man, you need vitamin A. This aids in health of your skin, your eyes, and your immune health. We need vitamin B to help energize our metabolic system and promote healthy red blood cell production. So if you're feeling sluggish and you don't want to get out of bed that morning, you know, I'm so tired, consider vitamin B. Now, as men, we need vitamin C, which promotes collagen production and gives your skin a healthy glow. See, collagen is what gives your skin elasticity instead of just being that dry catcher's mitt of a face. You don't want that. Now, vitamin C helps to improve uh, blood flow Blood flow affects your erectile function. So vitamin C may help sexual function. Vitamin C can't be stored in your body though. So it is one of those vitamins you have to replenish on a daily basis. So beyond merely vitamins, uh, here are a short list that I can give anybody about fruits you and vegetables that you can have that give you vitamin C. So citrus fruits, berries, melons, pineapples, for you guys who love Hawaii and other countries like that, papaya, tomatoes, spinach, and broccoli. Now, moving through the alphabets to, to vitamin C. We got that, right? See, vitamin C is an essential vitamin that we need for health. But also, you can draw it from foods. Vitamin C helps in the prevention of enlargement of the prostate, benign prosthetic uh, hyperplasia, or BPH. And this is common in older men. So you have things in common in young men and certain things in older men. This causes problems with urination. So eating fruits and vegetables rich in vitamin C is associated with a lower risk for BPH. Fruits such as uh, green and red uh, peppers, which sometimes you see us cook with those, kiwi fruit, oranges, grapefruit, and strawberries, potatoes, and tomatoes, and broccoli. So moving now to letter D, and vitamin D. So, for a long time, scientists tell us that every time your muscles move, they use vitamin D. You need this. Additionally, this vitamin keeps your immune system strong and helps your body to absorb calcium. That's needed as well. If you're looking to get this nutrient through food groups, I would suggest uh, food groups such as uh, milk, fatty fish, some brands of cereals, not all of them, orange juice, soy-based beverages, yogurt, and margarine. They're all fortified with vitamin D. Now, on to letter E. Uh, vitamin E, or psyllium, helps to protect our cells from damage. And if you have a tendency to work out hard, or play in life hard, you need this vitamin. So, if you're looking to get this vitamin from foods you can eat, then consider the following. Wheat germ oil, sunflower and safflower oil, and soybean oil. So, sunflower seeds, almonds, peanuts, peanut butter for sure, uh, beet greens, collard greens, spinach, and pumpkin. Everybody does eat pumpkin, right? Uh, once again, red bell peppers. So in closing, I will mention a few more that you can go and do research on to improve your health. Because I can start you, but you have to finish. So you need folate, also called folic acid, for healthy red blood cells. Calcium is good for healthy muscles, nerves, and bones. Potassium, is a key nutrient for keeping blood vessels healthy and preventing heart disease as men age. Magnesium, men especially African men, don't get enough of this mineral. So besides supporting healthy muscles, 
nerves and bones. Magnesium may boost your immune system and prevent heart disease. Zinc. This mineral helps to make proteins throughout the body. It fights infection and heals wounds. And finally, omega-3. So when I talk about heart disease or heart problems, I understand. Like I said, uh, this makes a year since I have had open heart surgery. You see the scar? So open heart surgery, if you never had that before, it takes you about a, it took me about a month, month and a half to be able to walk successfully again and to be able to breathe right. But I feel great now and I don't have a problem. So you must take care of your health. And mine was not that my arteries were blocked or clogged. It was that I had a valve that was leaky, leaky valve. So normally your valves move this way, like open doors. You put two doors together. But mine didn't do that. Mine, when it went up, one stayed up flapping open while the other one kept going down. And then ultimately they did meet up, you see. So between that leaking, a lot of blood whooshed through. So I didn't have a heartbeat that said, love dub, love dub, love dub. I had whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And so if you go to the hospital and they put their uh, stethoscope to your chest, they can find out whether you have the same type of problem. So eat healthy. We see you guys next week on a Men's Medical Moment. Go see you Have a great day.